UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Ralph Irvin, and this week we are going to be talking tennis as well as football. But before we get to that, my co host here is Javrina Seferai. UCLA is having a lot of exciting events. Let's take a look. Angus McClure is the in his third year as a member of the UCLA football program. After coming to Westwood as a tight ends coach, he's now the head of on-campus recruiting, meaning he is the man for coordinating all official and unofficial visits for prospective Bruins. Angus, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for coming. You started off as a coordinator here at UCLA. Now you're a coordinator of a different sort in terms of coordinating visits by recruits. Uh, how has that been as a tradition or a transition for you? Oh, it's been excellent. It's been uh, very smooth. Um, the coaches have been great. It's great to have a different leadership role. Um, and I think we had a, an outstanding recruiting class for New Heisel's first year. You actually started coaching right out of college. What made you believe that coaching was what you really wanted to do? Um, I, I always wanted to be a coach. In fact, uh, I had some great mentors in high school. Uh, my high school football coach was the head coach at Sarenfeld High School for 30 years. My basketball coach was there for 35 years. And my baseball coach was there for 20 years. So I had some great mentors and guys I looked up to. And uh, they really inspired me to become a coach. Now, right now, you are in charge of on-campus uh, visits, whether they're official or unofficial. How young are players these days coming on campus actually looking at where they're going to be going to college? Um, in most cases, uh, when they be begin their freshman year in high school, they start to have some interest in playing in college. Okay. And uh, having camps in the summer really helps motivate them to come, our, to, come to our campus and uh, visit UCLA and get to know the coaches a little bit. I would imagine that uh, you that, that's been a bit of a change in the years that you've been coaching, that it's just gotten progressively a little bit younger and younger and younger. Yeah, it's changed dramatically in the last uh, 10 years. Um, I think computers and the internet have really given a lot of attention to recruits. I think now fans have the ability to go online and look at prospects and do their own evaluations. Um, certainly lots of services do their evaluations that, but Right now, there's just a lot of attention because I think it's, it's available for people to see. It allows you to build relationships, too. It does. It really does. Um, I think now uh, students are more proactive with recruiting, mm -hmm. whereas 10, 15 years ago, they always kind of waited for the college to make that first step. Uh, now they're, they're uh, sending in DVDs, writing letters, sending emails, that type of stuff, promoting themselves. Coach, what are the key attributes that you are looking in football recruits? Well, the first thing we look at is their transcript. Uh, to come here and be successful at UCLA, you have to be an excellent student. So the first thing we look at is transcripts. Then, obviously, we look at their athletic ability. Um, do they have the talent to play in the Pac-10? 
Uh, do they have the ability to compete for a national championship? Uh, thirdly, you know, we look at um, their background. Are they good citizens? Um, what type of characteristics do they have? And those things. So we look at those three things in recruiting. And all of that combined, you need to find to find the perfect UCLA athletes, and it makes it a certain challenge when it comes to finding those uh, exact uh, young men. Well, yeah, and, and especially when, if you look at those three areas, you know, and we selectively move guys to the side, right. um, it, it kind of cleans up your board because it takes a special person to play here at UCLA. Now, how do you uh, envision improving the process or changing the process or does it need to be changed to uh, continually improve the football program? Um, I think we're, we're, we took a good step forward last year um, we really stepped it up with technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone to uh, tapeless recruiting film now. Okay. Uh, we've gone to a web-based computer system where the whole athletic department shares the same system. So when it comes to academics, uh, transcripts, admissions, uh, any type of uh, um, evaluations by the coaches, where it's video, all those things are shared in one file on the computer that everyone accesses it to. So it's really kept everyone in the department on the same page uh, when it comes to recruiting. Your recruiting, your first recruiting class just finished this season. How do you think they've fared out so far? We have an excellent class. Uh, we address the areas that we needed to address. Uh, each year, you know, in recruiting, the formula changes. You know, some years you're gonna look for offense alignment, other years defensive backs. Some years you need a running back. You know, so this past year, we addressed uh, the offensive line, which we brought in uh, five excellent players. Right. Uh, we addressed the defensive secondary, where we brought in five also excellent players. Um, and we also got some extremely fast players coming in. And uh, so I know a lot of people are impressed with our class. Are you surprised at how big and fast players have gotten over the years? Uh, it, it seems like in the last 15 years, players are gotten exceptionally fast before they're even reaching college and the same thing in terms of linemen and their size. Yeah well football's turned into year round and it's not necessarily through their high school programs because they're limited to how often they can practice and, and those type of things but it's the personal trainers or these football clubs that are going out on Saturdays and Sundays and training these guys and they're training year round. Um, they're certainly doing their strength training as well as their conditioning and their speed work so Football's turned into a year-round sport um, for these guys. Coach, what are the top selling points for recruits wanting to come to UCLA? Well, the top is our academics. Our academics are second to none on the West Coast. Uh, our tradition in athletics, just how successful our athletic program has been. Our coaching staff is, I think, the best in the country. We have some of the top assistants that you can either find on an NFL staff or a college staff. And uh, I think our program in general, it's growing, we're on the rise. Uh, again, we've had a great recruiting class last year. We've had tremendous players that are still in the program that are developing, and uh, we're, we're excited. Coach Neuheisel's known for his aggressive approach on, on the recruiting trail. There are talks about him hitting game after game after game on Friday nights. How much does that help you in the in the process of getting kids to come on campus? Oh, he's outstanding. Uh, I've never seen a head coach that is so engaged with recruiting as Coach Neuheisel. He's enthusiastic about it. Um, he brings a lot of energy to the staff or motivation to get out there and watch games. I mean, anytime you can get a, a head coach to get into a helicopter and hit four <laughs> games in Los Angeles on a Friday night, it's, it's unbelievable. And he's such a, a great, personable guy. Um, he does an excellent job building relationships and getting to know the recruits and their families, and he does an outstanding job. I would imagine that it's got to be a process to be successful that you have to enjoy going out to the games and meeting people more than it being a recruiting job. Well, Rick's a people person. I mean, he is very much into, he enjoys meeting people and finding out their backgrounds, and, and he's a great mentor for young men. Coach, what is it that you're working on right now? Uh, currently, we just finished spring recruiting, so we were on the road for the month of May, and uh, we went out and looked at all the uh, 2010, 2011, 2012 prospects. So what we did is we went out to every high school throughout the West Coast, and we did some national recruiting, and got in there and got transcripts, and met with coaches, 
and got to evaluate prospects by going to high school practice or going to track meets or, or that type of stuff. So we've just kind of wrapped up spring recruiting. Um, now we're moving into our camp season where this Saturday we're having a camp um, for uh, elite seniors to be. And uh, it's just going to be an opportunity for them to come and work with our staff and get to know UCLA. When you make your way onto campus, it, it becomes kind of a well-known item. Everyone finds out, wow, UCLA is here, don't they? Yes, and, and we do. We, we invite a lot of young men uh, throughout the country as well as Southern California. And uh, when the word gets out, people are uh, want to be Bruins, and uh, so they show up on Saturday. When people uh, do come to visit on campus, are there certain areas that are just like absolutes? We need to make sure that, that these young men uh, see this part of campus? Well, certainly anywhere on the campus, anywhere up Bruin Walk is, is, I mean, very nice for them to see. But we always take them up the Jan steps, and we take them up through that whole area up there. Um, we certainly show them our Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. which is impressive, as well as everything in the Bud Knapp Center and our locker rooms and the weight rooms and Spalding Field and that type of stuff. So, you know, we get a good chance to really share our campus with recruits. And uh, obviously, it's a beautiful campus, and, and they want to be here. Would you describe or can you describe the feelings that you feel when you see your recruits playing on Saturdays? It's exciting. Um, I know when I was a coach, I recruited certain kids to come to UCLA that, that are here now. And I saw three of them play as a freshman. And it was, it was real excited to see them out on the field and to see a Corey Harkey catch some great touchdowns to win games was excited. To see a Tony die, you know, starting in his freshman year at UCLA, it's, it's unbelievable. But it goes back to when we recruited these guys, we said, hey, if you're good enough to play as a freshman, you're going to play at UCLA, and, and so it came true. And I would imagine that over the years of coaching that you've had the same experience with players that you've coached in college making their way into playing on Sundays in the NFL. Very very similar, very similar. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, Jamie Richards, who I coached just uh, three years ago, he's starting for the Colts now, and it's one of those things you can kind of see kids develop and get better and better, and those are the guys that are going to get an opportunity to play at the next level. Now, at this point, you've been, in, you've been in this role now for over a year, about a year and a half as the on-campus recruiting coordinator. Where do you see UCLA football in, say, five years? Well, five years, we're, we're going to be fighting for it. Um, it's, it's really exciting. Um, in fact, the last two recruiting classes have been rated very high, but Rick's original class that he took over, a lot of those guys, we played nine freshmen last year, mm -hmm. and those guys are going to get better and better and develop. And as well as our upperclassmen, they're getting better and they're spending a lot of time with, with Coach Lynn in the weight room and conditioning. And I think we had a great spring ball this year and we showed a tremendous amount of improvement, I believe. And I think uh, four or five years, we're going to be fighting for it. And again, when you get good talent that comes in maybe a little bit raw, but you're getting great coaching, you just know that it's going to be just a matter of time before they develop into real special players. Oh, without a doubt. Our staff, like I told you before, I think it's the best in the country. Um, they really focus on fundamentals and just building their football skills, and they'll, they'll just keep working with them, and they'll blossom. Well, Angus McClure, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, coming up, we're going to be hitting the tennis court as we are joined by a member of the UCLA women's tennis team. It's all right here on UCLA Bruin Talk after these public service announcements. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. And thank you for joining us here on UCLA Bruin Talk. Coming up, we're going to talk women's tennis with Stephanie Wetmore. But first, Yavrina has this week's Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Buldazar Coach Orr of the UCLA Track and Field as our Student Athlete of the Week. Buldy adds his name to the list of Bruins that will compete at the NCAA Outdoor Championships this month who finish in the top five of their respective events to automatically advance to the Nationals. At the NCAA West Region in Oregon, Boldy placed second in the hammer throw with a mark of 213 feet, 
5 inches and helped the men's team finish 7th with 46.25 points. Only a few weeks earlier, Boldy capped off his conference career with a win on the, at the Pac-10 championships as he won his third and final hammer crown. Boldy took the lead on his first throw of the competition and never looked back as he posted a season best of 219 feet 7 inches to win his third conference title. Boldy has also won the 2008-2006 Pac-10 Hammer Crowns and came in fourth in 2007. Congratulations, Boldy, and good luck to you and the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA Athletics, you can call our fan phone line at 310-825-8575, or you can visit us on our website at www.uclabruins.com. Stephanie Wetmore is a junior tennis player from Canada. She has competed this year in both singles and doubles, finishing in the semifinals of the Pac-10 Singles Tournament, as well as claiming the doubles crown at the Duel in the Desert. She's also a member of the 2008 Women's Tennis National Championship team. Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Let's talk about that national championship. As a sophomore, you come into UCLA hoping to win titles, and sure enough, that year you uh, claim a championship. Had to be an uh, exciting experience. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, when I look back now, it's probably going to be the best thing that's probably the best day of my life. When we, I came in here my freshman year, uh, we actually surprisingly made it to the finals, and mm -hmm. nobody expected us to. So I think the second year we kind of went in there with like a different kind of mindset where we weren't satisfied. Um, my freshman year, we kind of we couldn't even believe it that we had made it that far. And then I remember looking at this picture of us losing, and we kind of had it up in the locker room and none of us ever wanted to feel it again. So we go back the second year, and I think it was like even after when you watched our tapes, you know, after we won our victories, we weren't, even in the quarters, the semis and all that, we weren't overly excited. Right. And by the time we got to the finals, we were up against Cal. We played them twice that year. And I think we knew what we were expecting. We were prepared. We had four seniors, and they were kind of even leading the team. I mean, our coaches kind of just sat back and let us do our thing. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, obviously they were great, but I think we were so together and we all knew what we wanted that when we got there it was just business and the finals it wasn't that close that we won four zero it's first to seven and um, I remember like the last match it was coming down to either court four or court one was going to win and our number one player Riza was uh, was a senior it was her last match mm -hmm. and I remember that one moment when she won I think I was the first one to just run out onto the court and I mean it's quite the feeling when like you work for something the entire year or you know and you see these national titles that everybody wants and you finally get one I don't think any of us could really believe it for the first 10 minutes we were kind of all in shock and it was the first one in UCLA history which is kind of unbelievable considering the history the school does have so right now I would imagine that uh, with with a coach who'd played at UCLA with, with assistants who'd been around the program forever and again as you mentioned all the seniors it must have been just like a massive relief for everyone to get this monkey off the bat that you that you achieved that goal. Well I mean Stella had been in the finals a number of times before and nobody wants to get that you know reputation of feeling oh you get to the finals every time but right. can't win that last one and I think we knew that this was our year we even had a senior come back she got another year of eligibility and she really believed in us thought we were going to win so I mean, everybody was putting it on the line, and I think even every day when we came to practice, it was like this different mindset of, we're not just here to practice, we're not just here to get through the day and then go on to class, we're, we're here to achieve something. And every tournament we showed up for, every dual match we had, I mean, we didn't have a perfect season. Everybody thinks we had this, like, dream season, but I think we were, you know, 25-5. and five. We lost some bad matches, actually. We mm -hmm. lost ASU when we were out there. And, but even after that, it's, we didn't get too down. Sometimes people let that one match kind of snowball. And that's not how we were. And kind of by the time that we got around, you know, to NCAA, Stella, I could tell how nervous we all were. And Stella was <laughs> just as nervous as we all were, but she keeps a really level head. So, I mean, I think it was a huge relief for her because the last time they won was in 81, but that's before um, the NCAA actually right. counted it. So um, we actually had a reunion this year, and all the old players from 81 came back. And uh, it was a, you know, a big deal that I... Now that I look back, I can't really believe that I was part of that team. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I won't believe it for the rest of my life. But Stephanie, I understand that you guys got to visit the White House after you guys won the national championship. How would you describe that experience? Well, I mean, being from Canada, you know, people are like, was it not as big of a deal? I'm like, no, it was probably a bigger deal. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we started, I think it was June, it was towards the end of June that we got to go. And we were all home, so we all kind of went from our different places. And it was only like an hour flight to D.C. And we got to be there for about three days which was great. It was all other um, schools that had won, I think, besides basketball and football. Okay. And so there was about 700 athletes. There was volleyball team, you know, everything. And 
so we stayed in DC for a couple of days and then we got to go to the White House. You know, we got had our passports checked, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was kind of cool. <laughs> and we finally got to go in there. We got a tour of uh, the East Wing. They didn't take us too much into the West Wing, you know, like not the Oval Office or anything like that. But <laughs> we got into the Red Room, got our picture taken, and then we all kind of lined up. We were beside our other teams on like, you know, a platform and we waited to meet um, President Bush. And he was great. I had, I mean, he was funny. He knew all about us. They obviously, he was prepared. I mean, he knew <laughs> who we beat in the finals. and. Then he gave us uh, gave us a speech out in the South Garden, which was really unbelievable. Like I couldn't believe I was at the White House, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know he was great. I think everybody was kind of in shock that we actually got to be there. It was it was surreal. Now that I think back, that I've been in the White House, not too many people can say that. So yeah, yeah. is there a highlight of the tour? Um, what do you mean? Like, was there something in specific of the tour that was just like a highlight for you? Um, I think going into the library was pretty unbelievable. Just the things that the books that were in there and I mean I find that stuff cool some people don't but just the fact that you know that you saw the security guards that were there it's kind of like you would think in the movies you know like the people on the roof waiting for you and like it was just it was exactly like what you know the movies kind of make it look like so tennis is an individual sport and you've been playing as an individual for years probably since since you were very young then you come to UCLA and it changes into being a team event and you go from having to just play singles to playing doubles. Obviously, you talk about winning a team title. How has that transition going from individual sport to team sport been for you? Yeah, well, when I was younger, I mean, the whole thing was con you were concentrated on yourself. You know, I mean, you made friends when you were younger and stuff, but it was, it was always, you know, all for number one. Mm -hmm. And so when I came down to school, everybody's like, oh, it's going to be so different. You're in a team environment. There's eight other girls there that you're competing against, but at the same time you want them to win, you know, because there's six spots for singles and six spots for doubles, so mm -hmm. obviously the numbers don't work out. So um, the first, the bit of the fall is when we play our individual tournaments, and that's when we can kind of, we're still representing the school, but at the same time we're trying to represent ourselves in the best way to try to get, you know, a spot in that lineup. Okay. So it, it's, it's hard because you want your teammates to do well, but at the same time it's like, well, you know, you want to do well yourself so that you get to play. And so then there comes a certain point of the season, probably around end of January where the lineups kind of been formed and then we have this saying it's all about the team. It doesn't matter what you got to swallow your pride if you you know you think you should be somewhere in the lineup and you're not you kind of just need to let it go and realize what role whatever role you're filling for that part of the year is the role that you're gonna have to fill and mine's changed as I've come through here. Um, my first year I didn't know what I was gonna come in I had you know these girls that were four years older than me and I was lucky enough to get into the doubles lineup I've been playing two for most of my time here and it just I mean, it changed from, especially from last year, because then four seniors left, and then here I am, one of the older ones, because we only had two seniors this year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it all kind of comes down to what you want to do with your team, and the reason we did win last year, I think, was because everybody just knew their place, knew their role, what they were supposed to do, and by the end of it, we were all doing it without even realizing it, so. Well, you talk about playing doubles, and you've changed partners, I, I probably, wouldn't even want to know how many partners you had while at UCLA, but how is that in terms of adapting to playing with a different partner in a match? Well, I mean, it's hard. When I first came in here, they didn't know what my game was like. I didn't know what any of the girls' games were like. I'd always liked doubles. It was great, but in juniors, it's never really emphasized. It's kind of like in pro tennis. Singles is much more popular. Right. So, And I get down here and realize that doubles is this huge thing that I didn't even realize how important it was. So they had us doing specific doubles, things I didn't even know about. Like, I learned so much my first year. And in the fall, they kind of tried us around with different partners to see, you know, because, I mean, chemistry is what it's all about, if, right. you know, game styles, you know, matching up. And I started playing with this girl, Elizabeth Lumpkin, and we just started playing really well together. Things started clicking. She was older. I was younger. She, you know, supported me when I would get upset. And so then we started playing during the season, and we started doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. And now this year, I started playing with somebody named Carling Saguzo. She's a freshman. She comes from a really prestigious tennis family. She's a great tennis player. Mm -hmm. um, but she's younger. She's three years younger than I am whereas Liz was two years older than me. So now I kind of had to switch from being the younger one to the person that was, you know, being the supporter. And it was definitely hard. Um, Carly and I didn't really start playing until after indoors around February mm -hmm. because the team was still so nobody really knew what was going to, you know, who was going to play together. And I think our first ten matches we went undefeated. We went on, like, a really big run. Wow. And I guess her and I just kind of clicked, you know. It was just something that, something that really felt, felt right and our games were good. And, Hopefully next year we'll be able to do the same thing. But finding doubles in chemistry is very, very tricky. And we had a good number one team. They were two in the country this year for a while, Yasmin and Andrea. And if you can get two out of those three doubles matches, you have the doubles points. So we're, we're just trying to find. Then our three teams started clicking. So 
if you can get those wins on whatever day it is, then we're going to be happy. <laughs> You've played uh, both singles and doubles. Which one do you prefer and why? I think I've had more success in doubles since I've been here. So, like, if I think back, you know, to my best memories, you know, I played in two national doubles finals. You know, like, those are kind of my freshman year and my sophomore year. Um, singles is very rewarding when you're out there because it's just you. So, but it can also be the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. So, if you know you're out there, it's a very, tennis. You know, you're out there by yourself, and whatever happens is on you. So, singles is rewarding in a sense that when you win and it comes down to you, everybody's like, oh, you know, you're the one. And when it comes down to doubles, it's really satisfying setting up a point with somebody or winning a match with somebody else because like nobody else understands what that feels like, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like you have this like connection with the person you're playing with and to be in a partnership, that's something I didn't really experience until I got here right. is my actions affecting somebody so much. So, I mean, I'd say overall, I, I mean, I love singles. It's the reason how I got into tennis. I can't say that I don't enjoy it more, but I've learned to really love doubles and realize how difficult, <laughs> difficult it is, you know? It's not just another addition to tennis, it's a definite part of it. This past season, uh, the team reached the round of 16 at the uh, NCAA tournament, but fell there. What was this season like following up the championship year? Well, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, the team from last year, the team from last year, because we were, you know, I guess the perfect prototype. We didn't realize it at the time, but I guess that's what the coaches wanted. And this year we had uh, three freshmen coming in. We had a transfer from Georgia Tech, and then another girl from Florida, and then Carling, my doubles partner. And they're great girls. I actually think our team chemistry is great this year. We all get along great. And they didn't want to use the word regroup with us. Mm -hmm. They wanted to kind of use the word, you know, we're just going to keep, keep going for it because why not? We're just, we're just as talented. Um, we knew going in that it was going to be a struggle because our seniors, you know, we didn't have as many. There wasn't as much leadership. But we went in with the same, same goal as before. I mean, there's no reason why you can't do something again. Like, who's to put limits on anything? Right. And we definitely didn't put limits on ourselves. We had a good season. We had to, we had to play a lot of matches because one girl wasn't eligible for a while, so we had to get all those matches in. And we did well at indoors. This is actually the first year that we won our first round at indoors. We made it to the Elite Eight. Uh, we beat Florida. And then we came back here. We beat USC at home, which was a huge win for us. And then we beat ASU three times. And they've always given us trouble in right. the past. And we actually beat them to get to College Station for the round of 16. And I think when we got there, it's just, you know, I'm not gonna, there's no excuses about anything. Every team, when you get there, anything can happen. And we played Miami, they were tough. We just, you know, just couldn't do it this year. And it actually felt strange because I got so used to making it to the finals or, right. you know, winning. And when we lost, I was like, I mean, I, I don't even know what this feels like. And I think the freshmen kind of really got the hint. So I think next year we're kind of gonna go out there even hungrier and hopefully, hopefully do better. Well, Stephanie, thanks for taking the time to join us. Thank, thank you so very much. much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I want to thank Stephanie Wetmore along with Angus McClure for joining us here for UCLA Bruin Talk. And thank you for joining us as well. For Javrina Seffer, I'm Ralph Irvin. And we'll see you next time as we take you inside the UCLA Athletic Department with UCLA Bruin Talk.